We live. We're, we're on, Pepcat. <laughs> All right. We were, we were uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today's scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Board of Selectmen. It is Monday evening, six thirty-two. If that clock is right, David. We were discussing uh, with FCAT the slow. new intro that they're producing for their board of uh, board of selectmen here, and um, they've they've. It's pretty amazing, but they've know, actually right? recommended that we have the theme of Looney Tunes as our number one. Either that or the, I heard the theme from Gilligan's Island. So, with that, we uh, call to order. And our first order of business tonight <clears throat> is we are talking to the, uh, the rural, rural development people to talk about 120 North Main Street and Glenn Owen from... Uh, the FR, FCRHA is here to talk to us. Great. Go ahead. Thanks so much. Um, I uh, just wanted to double check and make sure you guys all got a copy of the progress report. So there's a um, two page one right there. It's yeah. actually two items, yeah. And, and I won't sit here and read through other than to say that we're uh, well on our way through the uh, chapter 40 uh, hearings with the zoning board. Um, we've held six meetings, or they've held six meetings, where uh, 120 North Main Street has been the topic of uh, discussion. And, um, you know, good questions. I think uh, audience participation has been strong. There's been a lot of uh, uh, people coming out and uh, asking questions and voicing their opinions, and that's what that's the good. 40B process is really all about. Um, again, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and read through the progress report. You have it in front of you. One thing I will note on the fourth bullet point down, um, we noted that back in August we applied to the Federal Home Loan Bank of Boston for uh, the affordable housing uh, program funds. Um, typically those are grant funds uh, and in conjunction with grant funds you're able to apply for um, uh, subsidy on your interest payments for the permanent loan. Um, we just got word today um, that our application was uh, funded. Um, oh, congratulations. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's always good to have early money in uh, showing other potential prospective funders that uh, this project right. has uh, support on the part of um, state government. Hmm. Um, other than that, uh, things have been uh, moving along. As you know, there were a little bit of uh, a delay with uh, the uh, issue of wetlands on the site. Um, after uh, the Mass DEP ordered their uh, issue of uh, applicability, we uh, met with them on two different occasions. Uh, both with members of, I, I believe, Scott, you were there yep. uh, at one of those meetings, as well as members of the 120 North Main Street Committee. Um, the whole purpose of those pre-planning meetings with them were to uh, make sure that we get it right regarding this new delineation for a bordering vegetated wetland. And uh, uh, since that point in time, we have uh, relocated the building about 15 feet so it's entirely outside of the resource area that okay. DEP was concerned with. And uh, um, no loss of units. Um, there's been a uh, addition of a retaining wall given some of the other uh, complications with moving the building, but uh, we feel very confident moving forward with that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to um, bring to your attention, and there's a letter here with uh, Fran Feeney, the director's signature. Mm -hmm. um, requesting an extension of our uh, purchase agreement uh, with the town. It was slated to be up on January 15th for the initial period. Um, that agreement allows for two additional extensions, one of 12 months and then another of uh, six months. And uh, part of that is really tied to uh, you making sure that we are in fact attaining our our goals and, and there's forward progress on the development. Um, I did uh, have an email communication with uh, Sharon Everett today mm -hmm. and uh, she suggested if uh, the selectmen after hearing of RDI's efforts to, to date <coughs> decide to grant the extension, I recommend that the town request RDI to provide a consent to extension form documenting the new dates and then asked us to send her a draft of that. Um, 
I don't know if there's a particular consent to extension form that she's referencing or whether it's a letter that basically includes the dates, but uh, we'd be happy to provide that. That's in from the next town day council, yeah, from Coppola Pitch. Right. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure lawyers have got a way of figuring that <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Well, um, it, so, it sounds official enough. Consent <laughs> yeah, to, to extension. extension. I like it. Nice. So I will uh, draft again. That was uh, late this afternoon. I got that email, so I didn't have a okay. chance to uh, both write a consent to extend form uh, or get Fran's signature on it. But um, I can do that in the next day or so. Avery asked why you'd want to be a selectman for more than one term. I would say because you learn something new almost every meeting that we have. Good point. Not too long ago, we learned that the Board of Selectmen, if you're under 5,000, have control over placement of a poultry processing plant. Right. Yeah. Why I never known. And now I learned there's, a th there's such a thing known as a consent to an extension form. My life is almost complete. <laughs> almost. Just Not wait quite. for the next meeting. You sure you want to do this, Molly? Yeah. All yeah, right. I'll learn, learn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, you didn't. Go ahead. Sorry. That's really all I've got. Um, again, the uh, two-page progress report I think outlines uh, some of our work, both on the wetlands issues as well as meetings with the ZBA. Um, we continue to uh, work with the 120 North Main Street Committee and uh, have. Uh, basically had uh, members of that committee present at uh, both our meetings with the Conservation Commission and uh, also the ZBA meeting. So I think uh, they're grateful to be continue to be involved in this. Okay. Scott, any up? you want to add anything to that? No. Um only in that, uh, Mr. Chair, the, the, the process as it continues to unfold is a, a substantively public process, and that's really important. Input from across a variety of spectrums of views is important, and that the town uh, remains uh, through two town meeting votes, multiple open meetings uh, committed to uh, senior housing, affordable senior housing here in the, in the community. Dave, you don't want to add anything? No, I think that's just continue our goal. It's been one of our goals for a while now, so that's good. So I, I would like to add, if I, <coughs> I may, um, one, one of the reasons that the location, why, why the town even thought about um, getting into this uh, senior housing besides a need, but it was try to locate in a location that um, putting it out in North Sunderland would not not have made sense and I, I will just add that if people if anyone's been downtown lately um, you notice there's big orange tubes around the ball fields and around town hall and there's equipment and there's dirt being dug up well they're working on they are begun work on the, the right. pathways committee dream um, which has taken a couple years but it's moving forward um, I was I had the opportunity uh, to walk it yesterday uh, and I'll tell you if I mean it reconfirms why that location is such a, a great location because we are going to have a beautiful walkway along along the river uh, with a wonderful area where people will be able to walk and and one of the things that I thought was really cannot be overstated but it allows for the access to the bank of the river by for ADA accessibilities. Excellent. Those that those of us that can't can walk, uh, we take may take it for granted. But the, where the overlook is going, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's just to the south of the the river, uh, just to the south of Port the river, but it's just to the south of the uh, first island, um, and it's a it's a wonderful wonderful lake location and that will now be accessible to seniors that choose to live in that that housing development so I, I just think it's and again you you have, you have restaurants you have convenience store you have 
our library, um, you have Office, businesses, banks, you have right, post offices. We're, we're re re renewing the uh, um, sidewalks in that area. Uh, we just did the east side of uh, South Main Street, and hopefully in a couple of years we're we'll going to be doing the, the east and west side of North Main Street, which would be done at around the same time. Um, it's coming together. So I, I think um, it will be a welcome addition to our community um, and a long overdue also. So at this time, Glenn, you're looking for a vote of the board to extend by additional 12 months the, the uh, agreement that we had with RDI? Correct. Uh, do I have a motion from uh, the board? Motion. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor to grant the 12-month extension to RDI so that they can sign off on the consent to the extension form, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sherry, three, zero. <coughs> Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks. Yeah. Next up, the Sunderland Public Library Board of Trustees. Motley it looks looking, relaxed. Motley, <laughs> Motley looking crew. You were a little, it was a little tight tonight. <laughs> was it? <laughs> so if you guys, could, if you could come forward, please. We need to open our meeting too, right? Something yes, right. yes. Something special we need to do. Because we're having a joint one tonight, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> our esteemed chair. Senior chair, who's learning on the fly. Um, yes, yeah, so we are opening our meeting of the library board of, or board of trustees. Um, with a quorum uh, present. And we, this joint meeting is for the nomination of Molly Greer to the library board. Okay. All right, David, so what we have is we have to do everything by a little piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go through a few things and Sherry's going to answer. So, so when we have an elected position, elected position that's op becomes vacant congratulations Natalie for your vacancy <laughs> um, we we the first thing we look for is a is a an official that resigning notifies in writing of the resignation to the town clerk and that was done Correct. So Natalie submitted a re um, letter of resignation I think she could do both jobs personally because she, she will not be very busy in Boston. We all know legislators don't do anything, right? And the commute's so short. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Ten minutes, you're there. You know? maybe, maybe we need to talk to Elon Musk about there getting one of those hyper, yeah. hyper, hyper, hyper loops of Boston, right? I like it. Anyway. From MGM, maybe, straight up. To yeah, there you go. Boston. <laughs> you know, Mr. Graves has that point, doesn't he? Mm hmm. Who would think that you need east-west transport around this area? Uh -huh. Don't figure. Okay, so then the, the board receives a resignation and declares that the, the, the position is vacant. Town clerk has done that. The Master in the Law, Chapter 41, Section 11 says the board and committee must notify the board of selectmen, which you guys have done. Thank you, Catherine. Um, then the Board of Selectmen and the remaining members of the board shall by roll call vote in an open meeting fill the vacancy until the next annual election. So what we do is Sherry will be the roll call person. You guys are probably, you probably, the library trustees have called yourselves into a meeting, right? You open your meeting and uh, Catherine, you're taking the minutes for them, right? So, <laughs> we have a secretary. A secretary. Yeah. That, that does secretary stuff. Yeah. Minutes. <laughs> it's impressive. Record on the phone. Okay. <laughs> so, so now, so they're in, they're in session. We're in session. Do you have a list of the names? I do. Mm -hmm. Sherry has a list of the names. So Sherry's going to read off roll call. The uh, I will not vote unless I have to break a tie. Molly, you better hope there's not a we have a nomination. That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> not yet. Okay. Okay. So, uh, actually, we need the, a nomination. The, yep, the process that we followed is that we've advertised that there was a position open. We entertain people to contact us. At this time, do I hear a nomination for a member? I nominate Molly Greer. Okay, we have a 
a uh, nomination of Molly Breer for Library of Trustees? Second. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Do we hear any other nominations? If you hear any other nominations, I'd like to quote, like to move that the nominations are cl now closed. So moved. Yes. Second. 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 All those in favor, Second. signify saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Now, Sherry, it's your meeting and the roll call yep. vote, please. Scott Bergeron? Aye. Beth Berry? Not in attendance. Uh, Jerry Bridwell? Not in attendance. Hollis Graves? Aye. David Pierce? Aye. Justine War Rose Warren? Aye. John Sacri, Lauren Starr, aye. Valerie Borge, aye. David Wisman, aye. Tom Pine Kevitz, if needed. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this, Molly? I am. See how official right. it is. <laughs> it's, right. it's the one official meeting so, of the entire appropriate, the entire. So appointment. we have a uh, vote. Seven, seven zero. We have seven yes votes. On Uh, for Molly, uh, Molly, you are now the newest member of the Sunderland Board of Library Trustees. So you fill the position until um, of annual election. So you're you're there until the annual election. At which point you'll need to uh, go through the electric uh, election process, uh, sign on your campaign finance paperwork, and do all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Need to get sworn in, sworn in by the clerk. Yeah. Yeah. She needs to get. Oh, she nothing happens without being sworn right. in by the the lady that sits down in the that front office to the old first grade. Okay? You're never really sure if it's sworn in, sworn at. It's just the same. <laughs> <laughs> a little both. Yeah, little I was both. Gonna exactly. Say, it all ends up the same. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Thank you, Library Molly. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, we got a new li we got a new library trustees, everyone. That's good. All is good. Okay, um, we got the uh, three hundredth committee at uh, seven o'clock. So let's keep going. Uh, the minutes of two three. Uh, move the minutes of December third as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to uh, approve the minutes of December 3rd, 2018, as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Next up is minutes from 2-12-10-2018. Uh, motion on those. Uh, I'll second. Motion made and seconded to approve as presented the minutes of 12-10-2018. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, okay, so we're all set on that. Three zero, Sherry. Um, Board of Selectmen updates. Scott. Uh, Mr. David. Chair. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say that uh, a couple of things have been going on. The uh, Frontier Labor Unit as well as the Union 38 Labor Unit contract negotiations have begun. As a municipal rep, we've been to uh, four meetings. We have meetings scheduled through early March at this point, um, and they are continuing uh, quite well. Some of the capital planning committee had a meeting last week, uh, reviewed uh, a uh, propagated uh, forecast for spending for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. and we'll bring that forward in the next couple of meetings for the town of Sunderland, uh, Board of Selectmen. Uh, the capital working group for Frontier, trying to get the trying to get some uh, adoption of policies as well as a multi-year spending plan. Uh, to the Frontier School Committee. We're meeting again this Thursday for some questions that have to be dealt with. And then that presentation goes forward to the next Frontier School Committee meeting. And then earlier this evening, uh, there was a meeting downstairs uh, with uh, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments on their accounting services provided by the Town of Sunderland. It continues to be a work in progress. And uh, we look forward to uh, continued improvement uh, both in uh, deliverables as well as uh, internally what it is we're looking for accounting services. 
So mm. there's a lot going on uh, in that area. And there's frankly a lot going on in general right now. Good. Davey? Um, let's see. I'll be um, attending the Union 38 negotiations once we start those. So I'm just waiting to hear back on that. Um, and I've been spending the rest of my time um, in ditch stuff. So um, going, going over that. I think we might need to make a couple of tweaks to the charter, though, after looking at that. Because I think one of the, after reading through a lot of the stuff so far, I think one of the things that we need to be very clear on is, is clarifying what it, actually are ditches and which aren't because some of the things that we refer to as ditches are actually um, either um, intermittent or perennial streams too and I think that's extremely important because of the the regulations about that stuff so um, I'll, I'll write up you know what I think and then I'll pass them around once I um, finish going over the stuff um, and I think it might be important too to make sure I got to talk to George to see what we have but I think it may be very important too to catalog if we don't already have it or make a small database on all of our culverts mm -hmm. and so that we know which ones are up chronologically for replacement which ones are potentially undersized and obviously you know we know that there's some that need to be cleaned and stuff too so because um, that that needs to be done almost separately from it's related but it's separate from you know the ditch issue yeah. issue so um, so it's going to be a lot of stuff for that, but it'd be nice to actually resolve that once and for all. So, like we were saying before. So I think that's it right now. Okay. Um, as I st was starting to, st I, I had said earlier, the uh, pathway for the Sunland Riverside Park is well underway. It'd be very, um, I, I think, um, members of town are going to be. The community are going to be very pleased nice. um, just looking at what's out there right now. Sure. It, it's along, along the bank of the river. It's going to be handicapped accessible. Um, mm -hmm. And and some of us sometimes take those things for granted, but it can't be taken for granted by, by everyone. It, it's, 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 it's act, it was absolutely beautiful going down there. And and it's kind of consistent with, with other parks I've been in. Um, Agwam and, and, and some of the local communities, they enter, they have pathways that are intertwined with athletic fields and bandstands and music. So, mm. so I think it, it's, it's, it, it's very consistent and, and hopefully it'll, it'll progress and people will see we have the advantage that we're able to actually put ours on the river that a lot of places right. can't do. So, um, so that, that, that project is going, I, I mean, it, it bumps some ups and downs in every project, but that, just the look of it so far, is, is it's amazing so far. Um, I'm very I'm very happy with that. Also, uh, tonight, George uh, would like us to, uh, he's made a recommendation on a uh, hiring of a, uh, um, uh, a worker highway department, and of course that's contingent upon the background checks and quarry checks and, and and uh, watch it, looking at the licenses, he has had the proper license, but George would like to uh, put the name forward of Chris Sibley okay. for appointment. So Do you like want a motion, a motion on the contingency? What's that? A motion uh, contingent yeah. on, um, I'll make a motion contingent yeah, conti on all con the checks. Contingent upon all the, uh, the stuff that we have to do as a town. Oh. So we have a motion. Uh, second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So have three zero on that. Um, so I think that's uh, <coughs> that's it on that that right now. Um, Sarah, you we still got a couple minutes before we're supposed to talk to the. Uh, so you got five minutes. Yeah, great. Yeah, since um, I just came to give a very brief update on the park project, and you already kind of launched into that, so I guess you've been down there. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, the walk along the river was, was ap I mean, to be able to recognize that you're going to be able to get through there with a wheelchair yeah. or a stroller or, and, and to go in and out, it, it, it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, everybody from babies to the yep. most elderly people, the whole spectrum is, of the population mm -hmm. Be able to get down there, and it's a beautiful spot. I'll have to get down there this weekend and check yeah. it out. Yeah, um, so I just, um, just a couple things. Um, 
as you said, every project hits a few bumps in the road, and the, the biggest yeah. bump that we hit was that, and I just wanted to update you, the original design, there's going to be an observation deck down there. Is the footprint of it issue? Yeah, the original um, design we had was an octagon, and um, they got sort of <laughs> halfway into putting in the piers and discovered there were a few trees in the way, um, and uh, there's nothing you can do about a tree, um, you know, can't argue with the tree, you can't move it. Um, so the design was adjusted. So basically we had an eight-sided, uh, an octagon, and now we have like five sides of the octagon, which we're, goes I don't know if you can see, we're calling the dreidel design. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so I don't know if you got to look at it, but um, and you just straighten off the back. Yeah, we so, just yep. had to. We, we're losing a little bit of square footage, but you're still going right. to get that promontory. Right. View. That's I the mean, important part. You're not really going to be focused on what's behind you. You're exactly. going to be focused on what's in front yeah, of no, you. Yeah. No, that looks good. Um, and uh, yeah. I can see numbers. the trees on there. Yeah, the trees <laughs> on there. <laughs> yeah, we would have risked the the trees, and then. If we had risked those trees, um, they would have ultimately risked right. the, <laughs> the health of the um, yeah. observation deck. Um, so, and um, if all, unless, you know, we got, the, the weather forecast looks good and they are expecting to be completely done with the river walk, um, you know, in uh, another two and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and then you can see they're doing the prep for the field pathways now, hmm. but then um, then that will kind of go dormant, and then in the spring when asphalt's that. available yep. again, they'll put the asphalt in. Smart. Yeah. So you expect completion pre-spring out here, minus punch list. Yeah, in, the, yeah. in a couple of weeks. Yep, great. Was crazy. Keep our fingers crossed for good weather. Yeah, well, I guess they, they, the long-range forecast looks good. Yep. Mm. You never know, uh, of course, but, mm. um, but it's looking good. They started on the deck today. Um, and they also started um, digging the cutting for the uh, retaining wall mm -hmm. um, that's close to the boat ramp. Nice. Yeah. And I just, are there any questions? Or just, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Well, we're very, very happy with the contractors and um, the same Great. guys who did the, our beautiful Please. sidewalks. Taylor Davis, yeah. I think it was, yeah. Okay. That's brilliant. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And and one last thing, the, there were those three alternates, the, the parking lot extension. Mm -hmm. That's still not settled. We're still working out um, how to how to do the parking lot. I, I think we'll figure it out. But that's under discussion still. Excellent. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yep. Seven o'clock. Three hundred committee front and center. <laughs> what a willing group, huh? Yes. <laughs> they're all letting you come up front, Tom. Huh? They're letting you come up, and they're going to sit in the back. <laughs> How's it going? Good job. How, How are you doing? doing? Can't complain. It's over with. <laughs> a few things to wrap up in that, and that's it. Nice. Well... So what would you like to know? Everything or what? I've got about three or four hours worth of uh, information here to, to share. But one thing I learned about your meetings, you could talk that long. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, you know, they, they, you know uh, from the original town meeting, uh, you're talking too long, Tom. I, I do have uh, only one page of notes. I did take and highlight some stuff, but uh, pretty much there it is. Um, at the elevator pitch version. Yeah, the, uh, the, the elevator pitch. So where we're going, 190 some odd floors here and stopping <laughs> at every floor. Taking a deep breath. I don't know if you people noticed, but we had some sort of a celebration going on this past year. I heard year. something about it, yeah. No, no. I know, I know. The uh, committee members that are here today and throughout this, uh, uh, throughout, uh, this event and that stuff, uh, I got to give kudos to for an excellent job and for everything that was accomplished within the year as we know that when the original plans that started in October November of God only knows what 2015 2016 mm -hmm. the focus groups what they wanted to see happen 
I think we accomplished at least 80% of that uh, vision. And out of that 80% of doing it, these projects and whatever, uh, we had a committee of what, 12, 15 people. And throughout these past three years, I think it's been about three years that we've been yeah. working uh, diligently that uh, meetings every month, I think we possibly only took one month off, but uh, that was after the June uh, events and that. But, but besides uh, meeting monthly, Thursday, six o'clock sharp, uh, the subcommittees, the uh, souvenir subcommittee, the parade festival subcommittees, uh, they were meeting also uh, uh, monthly, bi-weekly, and God only knows, you know, I'm sure that uh, coming up to the event they were meeting weekly to take and make everything happen. You have a very dedicated group of people here that um, got this thing done. And so pretty much what we're gonna take and do is, um, uh, also you know, talking to some other people throughout our conversations with uh, souvenir sales and out on the street and that stuff. The wettest year on record in New England. Mm -hmm. Four days, no rain. <laughs> yes, we got lucky. Uh, really lucky and, there. Um, yeah, uh, so um, uh, Brenda was in charge of the weather. She checked uh, oh, the, uh, the Farmer's <laughs> Almanac and, that, and she uh, picked and chose or whatever. Figure that. Four days. One complaint I got was at the polka festival, the polka dance that we had. They said it was so hot. <laughs> and I said, the following Sunday, we had 103 degree temperature, mm -hmm. heat index 115. Don't complain to me about right. being 90 degrees and being hot. I said, you know, so whatever. But anyway, so um, we're going down. I, I also want to take and put out, um, as we start, you know, our, our two and a half years of uh, meetings and all this other stuff, I, I got to take and tell the select board here that the staff members that you have running the town, anything that we needed, we addressed, they helped, and they stepped forward, they went above and beyond. I'm talking about Sherry, Cindy, um, Wendy, uh, Brian, Susan, but also the police, the fire department, mm -hmm. the highway department. Everyone huh, at the library, everyone stepped forward. Yeah, and like, said, know that, yeah. no complaints whatsoever. We need this done or great. whatever, and it happened. In particular, like with the highway department putting up the banner and that stuff. So, you know, we just one of the banners we got. Uh, Brian, can you put that up? Well, we're kind of busy. They were doing the highway grading and that. So I didn't know that. And he says, I'll see if we can get to it. Got to it. Got it done. That's it. And I think that. Uh, um, you know, um, uh, Mike was Mr. Logistics, working with the members of the highway, the police, the fire department for all these things, pulling stuff together. Everyone cooperated. We could not have had a better celebration without the full cooperation, period. And I just got, you know, I got thank you notices I'm going to be sending out and that stuff, but I just go on and go on record to take and say that the people that you have working here for the town Splendid, super job, taking on all the responsibilities, like uh, Cindy Bennett with the, the web and everything else, and uh, Amanda working with them, social media and everything like that. How everything just came together, that uh, it really was a blessing knowing that I would get a call or whatever saying that, um, Tom, do you know this is going to happen? We're, we're missing this, we're missing that. But they kept us updated on stuff so we were able to take and fill in the blanks and that stuff. Uh, so anyways, just uh, when we started off the whole process, you know, a few of the things that I think we missed beyond, you know, the big celebration in, in June and October and November, the facts that we had smaller things that were happening while we were laying the groundwork for the, the, entire, um, uh, the entire celebration. So in the background, remember the garden waste collection that we had? And you know, we, we made some money off of that. But it got the word out. It started to show the word, you know, showing that we're having something done. Ron Rodak coming up with town wide tag sale. Ron, you wanna do that? Go for it. He organized it and he made that happen. More publicity for us. And then he came up with the coffee change canisters. 
you want to take a go, go for it. And that collected some money. So all along, little bits, nickels and dimes, just a couple of bucks here, a couple of bucks there. And um, let's not forget about the... Uh, Uh, the, uh, the Sycamore Tree Seed League project. Mm -hmm. Yay! <laughs> we all laugh about that. Uh, Rob Schultze, thousands of seeds planted. And I think at the, uh, uh, the uh, auction over at the art show, we had what? Um, I think five, five, I think there was five. Yeah, there were almost seven. Almost mm -hmm. seven, but we were thinking around about five. <laughs> you know. So two years of work on his behalf to take a think that we were going to have hundreds of sycamore seedlings that we could take and, you know, uh, put out and, you know, for sale or whatever. And we ended up with five. There's one at the Riverside Cemetery. There it is. There, there it is. So anyways, um, so what we're doing now is that... Uh, you know, the, the, the past few years of planning and that, so we're just going to take and wrap this up a little bit with, um, first of all, uh, uh, Cindy's going to take and do a, uh, a quick representation of uh, souvenir sales. Okay. Um, I have a sheet for each of you. Oh, great. Thank you. And Sherry as well. Nice. Um, so our main goals were that we wanted to keep things local, buying souvenirs and selling quality products and make them portable for people to buy. So we met all the goals. We tried to double the prices of some of the stuff, but not all the stuff because committee members felt that it wouldn't be affordable to people, so we didn't, or they wouldn't move, so we didn't do that. Um, so we didn't double the prices of everything. Places we sold at were the library, the town clerk's office, town events for no charge, like at the PTO, they had events going on, town elections, polls, library fundraisers and music events, congregational church fundraisers, um, 300 events in June at the town offices building, and October on South Main Street as well. Um, the local places we did do business with was Paint the Town and Palmer. They had the signs, the mugs, the trivets, magnets, and coaster sets. Mm -hmm. Silver Screen Designs did the hoodies and the t-shirts, Main Street building t-shirts, gray ones, um, and hats baseball caps, stuffed cows wearing an I Love Sunderland t-shirt. Um, the candles were done by Will Sillen, our resident graphic designer, even though he's not a graphic designer by trade. Mm -hmm. but he did the official logo for the town, as well as um, using his drone for the um, oh, some of the footage that he for did. the candle picture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we have on the candle. Candles were done locally in Greenfield. Um, the wooden hat pins were done by D and D Custom Solutions in Sunderland. Dan Alanik, he's given us thirty percent or twenty percent of the merchandise sold using the logo. Yep which we haven't received all the money yet from that. Pacific Printing Northampton did the parade t-shirts and the staff t-shirts. Sunrays Printing and Hadley did the tote bags, lawn signs, the marketing, advertising, the June and October events. Copy House, Copying, Printing, and Amherst did the programs for the June and October events. Amsterdam, New York. Amsterdam was the name of the vendor. Mm -hmm. in New York State, I don't know the time, I'm sorry, it was online, he did the ornaments, the red and blue ornaments, and the keychains, bottle openers, and I think that's it, so if you have any questions, um, I tried to put in the first amount next to the souvenir is the price that we paid, mm -hmm. and the second 
price is what we sold it for. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you. So one of the things as we will re uh, refer back to is that uh, from the focus groups of that, keep it local. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were trying to take and uh, look at, keeping everything as local as possible and keep the local people, you know, in, uh, with uh, for vendors in that. Uh, the next we got the, uh, I think uh, Brenda's going to do, do a report on the Festival of the Parade. Brenda, what you got for us? Because um, I wasn't sure what we were going for tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of give a little brief history of, of our parade committee. Um, when we started and we had our first meeting with, with the town, um, we were kind of concerned about people's, um, I don't know what word to use, their, their apprehension of spending so much money on a one-time event of a, of a parade. So we, we kind of made it our goal to not cost the town money with the parade. Um, and we actually did that. When Michael and I and Vinny decided we wanted to be on the parade committee, there were three of us and that wasn't enough, so we actually called people that we felt would work well with us and um, we had a really good group. There was um, Lenny Von Flattern, Peter Colesso, Bruce Bennett, Aaron Wiley, and Amanda. And all of all these people, um, starting in October, we made up like 200, 250 letters drove around to all the different communities delivering them, hoping to get um, some kind of a donation in that. And in the end, it was our town, our town businesses that really came through for us and sponsored um, divisions of the parade. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we put on a really good parade for not costing the town any money. <laughs> and so that, that, was, um, that was really exciting for us. And, I, you know, Tom, Tom made the comment like, here we are at the end. And I have to say, for the parade committee, it's kind of bittersweet because we actually had a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of work, but when we saw the results in the day of the parade, it, it was all worth it, um, every, all the time we put into it. And um, Hadley, Hadley Parade people, Holyoke Parade people, they were all really helpful with giving us advice um, and that, which that their information, you know, their help was invaluable to us. So after the parade, when we first, again, when we went back to starting, I, I remember sitting here going, well, we can't have a parade and have it just end and be the day. That's it, you know, we wanted more. So we started looking at a festival and how are we gonna do that? Um, so we started making the calls to people, um, food vendors and all that. And just to kind of sum it up, when, when it got close to like six months out, um, I couldn't do the parade and the festival, so Amanda came on and did all the craft people. Um, Amy Barker came on and did all the food vendors, took care of all that. Um, Tessa Doubleday uh, took over the bands for me, and Joe Sable um, was the wrangler for the bands, which you know was really pretty cool. And I have to say, TJ Conroy from Conway was super helpful in figuring out what we needed for bands, what we needed for sound, and the whole bit. Um, and I just have to say for all of this, if I hadn't gotten involved in this, and I'm sure everybody else feels the same way, there are a lot of really great people that we never would have met um, had we not done this. So um, that was a real bonus to just doing all of this. And I just think that the whole 300th year was a really, really good experience. But you probably don't want to put on another parade next year, right? <laughs> Not quite. Yeah. I have to say, though, this is a really exciting thing because Holyoke Parade, if you ever want to get involved in that, you have to be sponsored. You have to be invited and sponsored to be a part, you know, help them. And they actually invited Vinny. They invited me. <laughs> and anybody else here who did the parade, um, they were all like, we'll sponsor any of you who want to help us with the parade. So I thought nice. that was a pretty cool compliment. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 And then along with working with the festival on Saturday, uh, we had, of course, uh, uh, Brenda also worked with the elementary school for the Friday evening production. And then also uh, after the Friday evening production, uh, worked with the fire department to take and have uh, 
the showing of the fire equipment and like a small open house, a little fireman's muster type thing, but also um, we had the uh, polka band come and play. Nice. And uh, the band itself, the $1,200 on Sunday, uh, was totally sponsored by the South Deerfield Polish Club. So they stepped forward, they said, do it and that. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that uh, I, I just want to take and back up is a, a little bit about uh, uh, what Brenda was saying that, you know, all the infrastructure going on on the fields over here, that, you know, it was, you know, the coordination of all of that to take and show that this is what we can do, but also instead of a one day event, having it the, the weekend. And so the school stepped in for Friday and then the fire department and the polka dancer Sunday to take and kind of pull the whole thing in together. But uh, the contacts that uh, 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 Brendan and Mike had with the tent people, the chairs and staging and lighting and that stuff, and I think uh, Bergeron Electric had a lot to do with uh, getting power out there to take and make sure that we're all juiced up or whatever like this was a key component to the success of that. Um, I just also want to take and uh, once again, uh, selling, being uh, at a table selling souvenirs in that the last uh, how many months or whatever, just one of the responses that we got just this past Saturday was at the post office we were selling. Um, um, people came by, this one couple came by and said, Saturday, 11 hours, they were here straight. They videotaped, they were at the festival in the morning. They were, they, they videotaped the parade. They went down there, you know, the bands that were playing, the fireworks and everything. He says it was 11 spectacular hours that they totally enjoyed. Another uh, person came up and she says, I'm from what, Germany? I think it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, she says, our town is 2,000 years old. And she had company coming down, and she said, well, how the hell can a company, what, what's the 300th compared to 2,000 years old? And what can you do? She says it was fantastic what we were able to take and pull together for a town celebration. So all these things are still coming, are popping up. And the other, uh, uh, the other one that really stuck into my mind, we wanted to take and create memories. Mm -hmm. We wanted to take, and as Mike Waz said, the bar was set high for the 250th. The bar was set very high. We had to take and achieve that level and surpass it. I think um, Mike's vision, we surpassed it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, talking to um, some people that they were viewing the fireworks, not from Sugarloaf, not from the, uh, uh, um, the cemetery road, but they were over at the elementary school with hundreds of other people. And, you know, I asked the kid, I said, what was your favorite part of the thing? He said, oh, the parade of the fireworks. The father said, we were down at the elementary school. He's pu I'm pushing him on the swing. We're watching the fireworks over the town. I only wish I had a picture of the, you know, that would have been just, you know, gorgeous there. So now we're coming up to the, uh, so that was in, in June. Um, we kind of slept a few days after that. And then the uh, October events. And um, the, the, the October events were specifically for uh, people that wanted to take and do things themselves. They put together proposals, they stepped forward. At that point there, we have no money, but we'll take and support you with a couple hundred bucks worth of signage and that's about it. But at that point there, you know, uh, things started to fall together. That, you know, Judy Rose, um, working with the Congregational Church, put together the quilt program, and then they also had that Sunday uh, special um, program over the church talking about the, uh, um, the early heritage and people that uh, uh, moving into town. Will Schillen put together the art show by himself. And uh, I think he also had an assistant, I, I don't have her name there, but he did that all himself, you know, putting all that together the, the art, um, and financing it himself. Mike Walunas uh, with the Historical Society, uh, opening, up the, the, uh, opening up the Graves Memorial there. And just for uh, a number that uh, Mike and us, we had throughout this past year, we had over 360 people come through the Swampfield Historical Society and the Graves Memorial Building uh, throughout all the events that happened. That uh, um, for one, Mike Walunas was blown away by the numbers of people coming. 
and coming through there that and so but he uh, the last meeting that we had we figured about 360 people because we were trying to keep the count as much as possible uh, something else that just fell into the place was Steve Steiner with his plein air artwork done you know the day of the parade and stuff like that and then he had the art show afterwards in September and October there something that was totally popped up you know something that a person said I want to do this hey great wonderful um, <coughs> Bruce Weston and Doug Smith for the car show, the Main Street Car Show, that um, they had 105 cars come in to, for, that, uh, for that show. Uh, Linda Lepatka with the ghost, uh, re resurrecting the old ghost or whatever like this, uh, that uh, uh, according to the count down there, we had 250, 300 people that came down for that. But the procession, everything, everything fell together, no rain, it was another gorgeous day. So all of that stuff brought in people to the town and also had the people that <coughs> wanted to take and participate and do stuff on their own to take and highlight the history of the town. So pretty much that's it, you know. And then of course we can't forget the November events. Once again, um, our thing was to take and, uh, you know, honor <coughs> the veterans. That was one of the things that we did at the focus groups. So that's what we did. Uh, we pulled together the thing, and I got to take and make mention that throughout the October and November events and that stuff, that this all would not have gone as smoothly as it did unless we had a um, person that was in charge of logistics and just listening and figuring out things and parking, police, all this other stuff. Um, Mike was logistics and worked well with everyone to take and get everything smooth. So it was like. I, you know, you couldn't have asked for anything nicer to take it. It was just, what we saw was almost like smooth. It was like, you know, between porta parties, you know, golf carts, transporting people, this and that, the other thing, the police, the highway, the flags, you name it. You know, the logistics is a big thing that no one really ever kind of sees. But it makes the programs happen and flawlessly. And uh, the veterans program, as you know, that... Um, uh, the way that the, uh, the committee pulled things together, uh, Vinny was able to take, uh, Grandonico was able to take and get the, uh, the uh, UMass Coral Group to come down. Who would have thought? You know? And the Coral Group's there. We got the Honor Guard, the Colonial Honor Guard coming in to take all these things just added. And the veterans that showed up, that were invited, that came, you know, it was a wonderful time. The library's friends of the library, they put together the uh, reception afterwards. So, you know, after everything, you know, and also we got them to open the place up early so that as the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, choral group comes in, the honor guard comes in, people coming in early, they could take and keep warm there. We had coffee, donuts, and pastries and stuff like that there, you know, to keep, uh, uh, to get them going before the, uh, the program started. And of course, who could take and forget about the uh, the gala? Two ladies that came and said, "We need to have a ball. We need two years of working on this." Tracy Sackery and Justine Rosehorn, and they looked around high and low, different places. Came out, the Blue Heron was a place to have it, and they worked diligently on that for two two for two years at least. And as we know, that it was a wonderful success. We all had a good time. Um, I want to have uh, Amanda talk about the uh, anniversary book uh, that it is available. And uh, Amanda, can you give us an update on that? Yep. So we um, we made a book just to kind of commemorate the year and all the events that happened during the year. Um, so it is for sale now. It's on our Sunderland 300th website and on our Facebook page. in our Instagram, there's a link there. I'm gonna work with um, City to make sure it's on the town's website as well. Um, it costs $25, so it's pretty, we wanted to keep it as affordable as possible. Um, and on the website, uh, you can preview every single page. So you can see what photos are in, um, and what, <laughs> what costume photos are in, and, um, and, and just, it's from all of the events. So we wanted to make sure that everything had its, its place in the book. It is hardcover, yes. Yeah. It's full color inside. There you go. It is a hardcover. That sounds like fun. Need that? Yeah. Uh, Amanda, how many pictures did you have to go through? Well, 
lost count. <laughs> we had a photographer that we hired for uh, that covered all the events, and the last count I thought was like fifteen hundred photographs that she uh, she took. And she was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All of those photos are on um, Sunderland 300's uh, Flickr page. Okay. So That's all good of the so people story can look photos at of Sunderland that people scan in and send in to us, those are all on there as well. And then all of the photos from all of the like, unedited everything is on there. We should try to get a link to that on the town web page too. That would be good for people to easily be able to flip through. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, once again, that was a uh, uh, humongous undertaking to go through the, you know, just to look through all the photographs and see what would take to capture, you know, each each and every event. And, you know, so after, just figure that after the June events were done, you know, summertime, they were going through all the pictures and looking and starting to, you know, put things together, you know, and copy and paste stuff or whatever. And then the October and November events pop up and their goal was to take and get it ready for the holidays and you know making it affordable is another thing and a nice little uh, uh, souvenir so there we have it there so I think it just kind of kind of brings us down to um, what time is it? oh yeah my time is almost up uh, let's see financial report Una what do you got for us Town allocated us uh, approximately sixty-seven thousand dollars. Money raised from multiple sources: state grant, the parade committee, the tin cans, everything. Um, approximately ninety thousand dollars. So the total funds available were one hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. The total we paid out to date is one hundred and five thousand dollars. And while I'm, I'm still expecting a few more invoices to come in. Um, if we were to return the money to the town, you know, get about 300 today, we would be returning to the town $52,000. So we did very well financially. A round of applause for us. <laughs> Thank you. I should all be, you know, you guys did a great job. Fantastic. Thank you. The, uh, um, with what uh, uh, Una's been processing and going through this is uh, a as Una said this is a, uh, an, a a rough number in that as she said things are still coming and going in that right. and uh, you know but at this point here that you know to take and you know a couple of years ago um, to have a party and when we sat down and was at a party it was uh, to take and you know honor the history of our town but also from the very first time that we sat and we started meeting and we started to take a figuring out, you know, a budget of some sort. Right. And I think at that point there, our budget beyond what was anticipated from the town or the whatever, we came up to about 100, um, 109, 110, and then we added a couple of bucks for fudge factor, 120,000. So pulling committee members together and doing research and kind of putting a ballpark figure into you know what the future is going to look like two years down the road and what the expenses are going to be and everything like this and doing all that groundwork you look at all the numbers we're pretty damn close we're pretty and no we're not going to go on the finance committee thank you damn it no i know i know you're <laughs> scott you were looking at me like you're, you're signing i got up i had that glint no, in my eye no. for a minute but uh but at this point here we are going to be here. Uh, we will be. Um, uh, we're appointed until uh, June thirtieth of two thousand and nineteen. Uh, we are going to be taking and putting in a um, a more detailed summary of things of uh, the parade committee, the souvenir committee, festival, and uh, uh, three hundred. We'll be uh, putting in a more of a detailed document, and that's the for yeah. the town report and that. But I thought that it was important for you guys to get to know that, uh, um, you know, the end is coming up for the, you know, our, our year. And also the fact that gives you an idea of what will be coming back, you know, into the town reserves uh, after, you know, we're all, all said and done. Right. So pretty much there it is. Are there any questions, comments, or what? Getting ready for the 325th, or? What? I didn't yeah. hear that. 
No, I, th I think. Well, we do have we do have the great T-shirts that were the two seventy fifth, the three hundredth. So that design's already set. All you have to do is change the numbers to three twenty five. You're go. golden. You're golden. No, I think you guys did a great job, and I know people really appreciate it. And, and like you said, we got amazingly lucky given the weather this year. I mean, the parade day was fantastic. Everybody had a good time. So, if I may add just one comment, and many uh, applauses were given tonight, and uh, the many groups in town, and one group that wasn't mentioned and certainly should be, mm. were the ones behind the camera, and those are the people at FCAT. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's they true. They were there skipping. for a lot of them, yeah. They were that's there true. for the parade. They were there for every event, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and what I saw on TV so far, and I haven't seen it all, but what I've seen is very, very well done. As they do every week for us mm -hmm. over there. And Michael, thank you for bringing that up because also I'll take a tag on to that. One of the videos that they did up uh, about the Bridges of Sunderland, the three minute piece, mm. uh, that won an award. Oh, the yes. Jonathan, uh, yeah, that thing, yeah, it, it won a uh, New England uh, Broadcast Award for, yeah. so pretty much, you know, we have a lot of talented people here, so. An award? Yeah. Yep, see, I, nice. I think I think Chris will be mentioning this, but you should keep that in mind when it comes time because. Um, our lovely FCC is trying to dissolve things like FCAT and get rid of it. So yeah, I know. Keep that in mind because of the, that's a great public service that they do for our town. So I know. I know. I won't get into the details of that, but be there to support them. You know, think of all the work they do. But I think uh, to wrap this up, that the uh, the one uh, um, the uh, Janet uh, Connolly, she had to take and leave early uh, a week before the celebration started. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still keep in contact with her, and definitely going to be sending her a uh, book nice. for oh, you That's know nice. little members, keeping her po uh, keeping her posted on that stuff. But uh, overall, you know, uh, the uh, committee members, you know, what can you say that everyone has a special talent? Everything came to the table, got it done, and that's it. So there it is. I work. I think we uh, we did the town proud. I'm all set. Agree. Amanda, Vinny, Brenda, Cindy, Tom, Una, Michael, and Janet. I just like to thank you. Um, it sometimes when you come from the outside, as many of you were coming into the working of your municipalities, maybe. Um, interesting at best, frustrating at the worst. Um, you handle it well. Um, there was never a bump in the road that was too too big for you guys. Those that's an important thing. Uh, you came in with a great attitude, and you're leaving with a great attitude. And and Brenda, I was I was very happy. When you said that you met a lot of nice people and a lot of nice and you did a lot of nice things and the friendship that the friendships that you gained during this experience i i hope um you'll always remember um i appreciate it sitting in the back of the room at your meetings to listen what was going on you um, you were a unique group, um, and Tom is right. When you you all had you, your own special talents, um, and no talent overshadowed any others. So it was a combination. Um, there and and you all were, you all were working on a common on a common thing to put it put on a, a three hundred to be uh, one of a kind, and you you accomplished that. Um, I I can't say enough um, of I mean you guys heard some comments um, I can tell you that um, comments that I heard um, from other towns um, it was a it was a wonder that more of you haven't been asked to move to because and we know there's other towns beside us that are, are going to be taking up um, celebrations at all. Um, I've, I've offered your assistance to some of these other towns. 
unfortunately you only get to put on one parade but the knowledge that you gain from that parade it's amazing um, and and Michael and Brenda to to be offered to work on the uh, the Hoyle parade to be sponsored <laughs> that 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 is that is quite that is quite an honor in it, in in itself so that that reflects very highly on on you and your and your and the talent that you offer. We had a good group on the parade. You did, and 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 we had fun. We had fun marching in it. Um, I didn't think it was too hot either day, to tell you the truth. But oh, it was a beautiful you know, summer I, day. Again, I just want to thank you. In 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 the the year started out not the best for you guys because as soon as you had uh, an allotment of money. I we, board of selectmen had to come and tell you guys that you had to give some back. Um, but you know it, that that could have that could have been that could have been a downer for you guys, but it wasn't. Um, I think you guys just worked hard because of that, and the amount of, it, it. And again, some a town to the south of us that had our celebration, I think they had a lot easier time raising money. You guys had to. You guys had to work really, really hard, um, and and there was some concern about uh, the amount of money to put on one day. But you didn't last one day. It it really lasted an entire year. And I just and again, I just want to thank you all. Uh, it was a it was an honor and a privilege working with you people and and watching how you got you got things done. It was amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, good night. Yeah, good night. Good night. Good night. Merry Christmas to Same all. Same to you. Have a good holiday. Okay. We'll kind of put a new celebration for you guys. We'll find something. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Sherry, you have anything to add? Um, no, I'll be meeting with the Energy Committee tomorrow. We're meeting with the one of the um, contractors right. for the green communities to look at projects for the next round in March. Okay. Oh, yeah. And we just need to appoint David um, as the representative for the Sunderland Elementary School contract negotiation. The Union 38. Union 38. Second. Yeah. Should I abstain all for those, that vote? All those in favor yeah. signify by saying aye. We didn't get out vote anyway. <laughs> yeah. so I, 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 already did, I already did your first meeting, yeah. so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, yeah. Anything else? That's it. Um, I think David, we're working on the uh, we're working on the uh, charge for the ditch committee, right. and David has uh, David has volunteered to serve on that. So mm -hmm. do we want to uh, post David? it on the website too? Yeah, you want? To? Yeah, because we need seven members. So yeah, motion to have Dave uh, Pierce work on the committee. Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Anything else? See how quick that works, dude? I don't know. It's just like and, that. And why, why does Washington have such a hard time? I know. It's so easy. Jerry, anything else? That's it. Scott, anything? Uh, no, just wishing everybody a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Exactly. Same thing. Have a safe and happy holiday. Okay, so... Um, just remind everybody that town office building is closed Monday, December 24th. Our next uh, regularly scheduled meeting is January 7th, 2019. I was going to say 2019, yep. FCAT, you all set? All right. I just uh, like to wish everyone a uh, joyous holiday t season and a uh, Merry Christmas. Oh, they entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion made and second to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero.